Welcome back. Okay, so now we're talking about the eigensystem realization algorithm, which is another method of getting a linear dynamical system that fits your data. So this is purely data-driven. It works for experimental systems. Um, the assumption here is that you can describe your data with linear dynamics and that you have an impulse response. Okay, so that basically means that my input u I whack it very fast with some energy. I hit my system with a hammer. I measure how my measurements uh, change in time and hopefully eventually die out like this. And at the end of the day, what I do is I collect that measurement data, y at time 0, y at time 1, y at time 2, and so on and so forth. I, I measure a time series of y. I've drawn this as a single input, single output system. But in general, this could be a, a you know, vector of inputs and a vector of outputs. I could have three inputs and 10 outputs all of this generalizes. These would just then be uh, little matrix blocks of size out by in. But I collect this data in pink here. Okay. Now, if, if my assumption of this being a true linear system, this is a linear system, but I don't know what A, B, C, and D are, but there is some linear system under, underlying these dynamics, then this Y0 would correspond to the D matrix, uh, Y1 would be CB, y2 would be CAB, and so on. So there's a corresponding expression of these measurements in terms of these unknown matrices that I don't have access to. So the first thing we're going to do, um, just really simply, is we're just going to pull off Z, y0, the first measurement, and we're going to call that our D matrix. First thing is first, so we have our D matrix. That's easy. Uh, we have D. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take y1 through yk, where k might be large, we're going to take these measurements and we're going to try to back out a best fit model for A, B, and C in terms of a, a small a state, X, that's as small as possible that still captures these input-output dynamics. Very similar in flavor to balanced truncation, except that this is system identification. I do not have access to the model. I just have data. Whereas balanced truncation and balanced POD, you had you know, data and a model to generate that data. Okay. Uh, but the starting point is actually super similar between ERA and balanced uh, POD. And so I'll just write this down. So what we do is we take all of this measurement data uh, and we stack it into a big Hankel matrix. Okay, this big Hankel matrix uh, is Y1, Y2, Y3, dot, 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 Y2, Y3, Y4, dot, 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 dot. And you get the picture. You can keep doing this over and over. You hope that you have enough data that this can be a big matrix, dot, 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 dot. And you might ask yourself, well, how much data should I collect? Basically, I want to collect data until y approaches 0. So if I have a really lightly damped system, this could be a very large matrix. And I also want a small delta t so that I capture the fast time scales. Okay, So this could be a big matrix. But this is basically just your time series of measurements uh, in a row, and then you shift them over one delta t, that's your next row, you shift them over delta t, that's your next row, and so on and so forth. So this is a big matrix. Um, of course, you could write this in terms of CB, CAB, CA squared B, and so on. You could write this in terms of the unknown system, but for now, I just want to be very clear, this is data. Okay, This is a data matrix H, a Henkel matrix. Um, what you can then do is um, you can then take the singular value decomposition to figure out what are the kind of left and right eigenspaces of this. Before I do that, I think there's one more thing I want to show you, which is um, if I plugged in CB, CAB, CA squared B in all of this, I want to just remind you that this equals that curly O matrix times my curly C matrix from before, where this was my adjoint impulse response matrix and this was my direct impulse response matrix. Now, this was non-physical to get. I, I can't get access to curly O in an experiment. I can't run an adjoint experiment. There's no such thing as a transpose Hubble, okay, or a transpose International Space Station. But I can build this Henkel matrix nonetheless from data, and it is what I would get if I could run that adjoint simulation direct modes and uh, adjoint modes times direct, adjoint snapshots times direct snapshots. So this is equal to that O times C from before when we were doing balanced POD, a la um, Clancy Rally 2005. This Henkel is the same as curly O times curly C from BPOD. Let's say from uh, BPOD. 
Okay? And then what I can also do, I mean, I have all this data. I hit the system. I measure it for a long time. Data is cheap nowadays. I can also measure uh, H prime, which is basically um, all of this one time step in the future. So it's the same matrix, but instead of y1, this is y2, y3, y4, dot, 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 y3, y4, y5, dot, 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 running out of space, OK? But you get the idea. It's exactly the same size as h, just shifted one delta t in the future. Uh, and so y1 becomes y2, and so on and so forth. Um, it would be cool to verify. You should probably verify this. So remember, O is um, this big matrix of C, CA, CA squared, CA cubed. Curly C is a big matrix B, A, B, A squared B, A cubed B. You should verify that when you multiply those together, you get this matrix if you substituted in all of these blue terms here. Okay. So anyway, I'm starting to establish that there is a connection between ERA and the balance models that we talked about earlier. Um, basically, it's the exact same Hankel matrix we built before, except I'm building it purely from measurement data. Okay, and I build H prime. And I want to point out, this is the important part. This is why I introduced O and C. This is equal to curly O times the A matrix times curly C. So if you think about what Y2 is, I'm going I'm to do this for one of these cases. Okay, so Y1 would be C, B. All that Y2 is, is C, A, B. Okay, Y2 is C, A, B. All that Y3 is, is C, A squared, B. All I do to get H prime is I add an A in the middle of all of these expressions. I just advance them one more time step by multiplying with A. That's what my di discrete time dynamics are, is, it, is multiplying by A. So I add another A, and I get H prime. And so if I, if I could write this as O curly O curly C, I can write this as curly O A curly C. And what the Eigen system realization algorithm is doing under the hood is essentially we're trying to, to take H, this is data, H prime, this is data we have. We're trying to approximate the left eigenspace, the left singular vectors of O, and we're trying to approximate the, the right singular vectors of C, and we're going to try to unwrap this and isolate A. We're going to try to solve for A uh, from H and from these eigenspaces. So that's what we're really doing, and this is also going to further establish that connection to, to balance truncation. OK, I hope everyone's with me so far. Um, we have data. We built a matrix. We built another matrix. That's all we've done so far. All of the other stuff is just the framing. I have data, and I built H and H prime. That's step one. Well, step one is collect the data. Step two is build H and H prime. Step three is take the singular value decomposition of H. And I'm going to do this exactly like I did before. I have U sigma V. I'm just going to call it transpose. It's complex conjugate transpose, but let's just use transpose. Um, and just like before in, in balanced POD, I'm going to write this as my first R columns of U, the dominant modes, the dominant left singular vectors, uh, times all the stuff I'm going to truncate. I'm going to have the same thing for sigma dominant and then sigma truncate. And I'm going to have V, how do I want to draw this probably vertically, V tilde transpose and everything I'm going to truncate transpose. Okay, This is exactly what we did with balanced POD. We built this Henkel matrix, but we did it from direct and adjoint snapshots. We took its singular value decomposition. Uh, this is going to come back time and time again. So there's a new method we've developed called the Henkel alternative view of Koopman for nonlinear systems. It's also going to be in terms of an SVD of a Henkel matrix. So we're going to do this a lot. We build a Henkel matrix. These are time series data. I take the singular value decomposition of that time series data, and I get a set of dominant uh, columns in U and a set of these dominant rows in V transpose. And those are my dominant eigen time series, kind of rows and columns that best describe this H matrix. So I can approximate this. If, if my singular values drop off fast, I can throw away all these truncated things, and it's still pretty good approximation with U tilde, sigma tilde, V tilde transpose to this. And maybe I can do that with five columns and five rows instead of 1,000. OK, that's, the, that's where the, the reduction is going to come in. OK, 
collected data, built a matrix, took the SVD. Uh, now, what are we going to do? So this is where it's going to get a little hairy. And I'm not going to walk you through all of the steps because um, there's a lot of them and it would take a lot of time. But you can go back to the original paper or you could go to uh, uh, Ma and Rowley 2011 TCFD or you can go look in the book and work this out um, in, in detail. Okay. So we're going to use U tilde to kind of factor out um, this O matrix, and we're going to use V tilde to kind of factor out this C matrix, and we're going to try to solve for A. So that's what we're going to do. Basically, once I've collected my data, built my matrices, and taken the SVD, I can go directly to building a model. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I have all this stuff. I'm going to build my model, and my model is going to be uh, A tilde, B tilde, C tilde. This is going to be a rank R model. So I'm going to choose this truncation. I'm going to choose R based on sigma. Okay, so if you were actually doing this in practice, you collected your data, you built this matrix, you took the SVD, what you should do is you should plot the singular values and see where you can truncate. What is the good R where you can truncate those singular values? Um, yeah, that R. And so we pick an R so that we capture most of the input output energy of this, uh, most of the Henkel singular values um, are in those first R. And then I'm going to build these A tilde, B tilde, C tilde matrices from data that I already have. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say A tilde is, and this is a hairy expression, I always forget this. So it's sigma tilde minus 1 half, U tilde transpose, H prime, V tilde sigma tilde 1 half, minus 1 half. Okay. It's a hairy expression, but I just want to impress on you. This is a symmetric matrix. Okay, H is a symmetric matrix. So there is some inherent symmetry of U's and V's and the sigma, so I can kind of split this. So what I'm doing is I'm splitting U tilde sigma 1 half, sigma 1 half V tilde, and I'm inverting that. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm calling that O and C, and C, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to basically multiply by O inverse and C inverse to isolate A. If I could multiply this by O inverse and C inverse, I'd get an A. That's what I'm trying to do here. Very hand wavy, uh, but there's kind of rigorous math to back up what we're doing here. B tilde, uh, also kind of a funny expression. It's uh, sigma tilde now to the positive one half times uh, V tilde transpose times this funky matrix, which is um, the identity, the P by P identity matrix times zero times zero. I'll tell you what this means in a minute. It's it's uh, kind of a mess. And C tilde is similarly uh, a Q by Q identity matrix, 0, 0, 0. Now times U tilde times sigma tilde 1 half. Okay. Now the reason I have this thing here is basically because I can only have P, I only have P uh, inputs and I have Q outputs. I think I should swap P and Q. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Whatever the number of inputs and the number of outputs are, that's what I'm, I'm doing here. Because this sigma tilde to the 1 half V tilde T, this is a rank R. These are rank R matrices. But I might have R equals 10. I need 10 hidden states X, but I might only have two inputs. So I select the first two columns of this B tilde, of this matrix to get B tilde. Similarly, I select the first Q rows of this rank R matrix to get to get C. There's some fancy stuff going on under the hood, but this is a procedure. Okay, so step one, collect the data. Step two, one, two, build your Hankel matrices in H prime. Step three, you can take the SVD, and step four, you directly get a reduced order model A tilde B tilde C tilde. Very useful. You can do this directly from data. This is why this is my go-to linear system identification method, because it's super simple. You collect impulse response data, you build these matrices, take an SVD, and you have dynamics. Okay, And this A tilde, B tilde, C tilde is, I mean, very much in the, in the vein of balanced truncation. This is a very good model. It's one of the best models you can get for rank R that describe this system. 
Okay? And you choose that rank by looking at these Henkel singular values and seeing kind of how, much, how many modes are necessary to describe the dynamics. OK, uh, so the last thing I'm going to show you is basically um, that you can actually write down the system model. So then you know, x tilde k plus 1 equals a tilde x k plus b tilde u k y k equals c tilde x k plus d u k. And remember, I grabbed this d matrix. It was my first measurement. A tilde, B tilde, C tilde come through this ERA procedure. So this is a discovered model. We literally had data and we discovered this model that best fits the data. This is essentially a regression that it finds the best fit A tilde, B tilde, C tilde, and D that match that impulse response data for a given rank R. Very cool. I can collect measurement data. Um, and I can essentially find a model that describes that data. Notice um, these are all tilde x's. I don't know what these states mean. These tilde states are in terms of eigen time delay coordinates. It's this weird meta state x that I might not have a physical interpretation for, but it is the hidden state and the hidden dynamics that are necessary, it somehow um, abstracts, in the case of the Hubble Space Telescope, it's abstracting all of these rich uh, elastic waves into a few modes, a few dominant shapes that you can superpose with different eigenvalues to get that input-output dynamics. That's what the Eigen System Realization algorithm does. It's very closely connected to BPOD because you can write it in terms of these uh, direct and adjoint snapshot matrices. And that connection has been um, established to show that this really is the same model you would get with BPOD if um, under some assumptions. Okay, thank you.